morning resellers it's cloudy and rainy just like spring should be we're not quite to spring yet but it'll be here in just a couple of weeks and this is the kind of weather I would expect it's probably <coughs> excuse me probably in the high 40s maybe the low 50s and it's raining and um, yeah so could be worse could be snow and here in Columbus, Ohio, we have Canada geese. We have Canada geese everywhere. I don't know if you can see those or not, but um, they like walk around town here. Um, they live in a suburb. Um, they walk around town here like they own the place and. You uh, just have to stop and wait. Let them cross the street. You can honk, but uh, they just honk back because that's what these do. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it was very novel for me when I first moved here, and there are geese everywhere. But you know, sometimes it can be a little frustrating to try and get through traffic and have to wait on geese to cross the road. But it, I digress. It's going to be a great day. I can already tell because. I woke up and that's a good thing so I'm going to a storage unit right now to get a couple of things and um, uh, I'm gonna take you back home and show you what I sold today or what I sold yesterday and and late Saturday uh, I did send a shipment out on Saturday so the the uh, items that I'll be showing you today are just things that sold since like Saturday afternoon and uh, I had a, a decent weekend, can't complain. Um, I ran a sale for about 15% off, nothing fantastic, but um, again, I'm trying to move some things out. So I probably have some really low selling things that, that sold, but um, yeah, I'll show you all of those items. And then um, we'll see what we get into today. Um, I need to do some listing, but I really, really would like to go do a little thrifting. I haven't thrifted, I think, since maybe Thursday or Friday. So we'll just see, we'll just see what happens today. But I will get back with you in just a moment. Okay, guys, um, let's get into what sold um, since Saturday afternoon. And um, let's just hop right in. So the first thing that sold were these mini figs that um, came in that palette that my sister and I bought. Um, these are just like blind mini figs. You don't know what's in here. They're actually for Disney, and there was one um, just Lego uh, mini fig, and these sold for $16.99 with free ship. And they should ship for $277, so that'll go out first class. Um, this came from that Wii lot that I bought that I've already well made my money back because I still have the one Wii with um, three or four games, and I'm going to keep that for a while, plus two controllers, plus two of the steering wheels for Mario Kart. So, um, plus I sold that lot of uh, those Wiis and controllers and all of that. I think for $50 last week. So um, this came in that lot. This is a sealed Yamaha uh, motocross game, supercross game. And this is going for somebody's birthday present. So I had offered um, free shipping with this for um, uh, first class, or you could do media mail actually. Um, but they asked, you know, how long would it take? And so I uh, told them I would upgrade them to priority. So this is going to go in a padded flat rate. It'll cost me about $6 to ship this, but I, I sold this for $29 and 74 cents. So, um, you know, I, that's fine. I'll make about $20 profit on that. Um, let's see what is next here. Bought these two, um, they're leapfrog phonics games. And, uh, one is the barnyard and the, the fridge phonics. Um, they're called Fridge Phonics, and this one is the Barnyard version, and they have these little letters that you can plug in, and then um, it will tell you what the letter is, the sound, and all of that. 
Um, and it does come with like all of the barnyard animals and the letters. I bought these for about $4 uh, for all of them. I sold them. They were on sale for $24.64 plus shipping for a total of $34.69. Um, I ended up selling two more of these tape roll dispensers for like gift wrap. Um, the two, two of them sold for $29.98 plus shipping for a total of $41.13. Um, I have sold, um, I sold the cards for this already. I forget for how much, maybe $12 or $12.99 shipped, I think. Um, these are the movers for that game. These are, this is Ash from Pokemon and, uh, there's five movers in here. I sold that for $12.99 shipped as well. So I'm doing pretty well on that game. Uh, let's just get this going to this thing. This is a VHS rewinder. Um, it's Corvette. I paid $2 for this. I thought it would sell um, for more, but it sold for $11.04 plus shipping, so $19.74. I've had this for about a month and a half or so. Maybe a little bit longer, but I don't think so. Um, I sold another pack of those Cards Against Humanity. Um, sold this for $6.37. It was on sale. I, used, I had them priced for $7.49. So I sold it for $6.37 shipped. It'll cost me like $250, $260 to ship this. So I'll make a couple of bucks on these and I still have a few more left. Um, let's see. This is an R2-D2 chip bowl from, um, from Kellogg's. Chip bowl, cereal bowl, whatever you want to do with it. But it, um, I think it it's a turntable and it makes sound, but the battery's dead on it. But this is one of those, again, nostalgic, cool things that I couldn't leave the store without. I think I paid a dollar for this, um, but it just didn't sell. It just didn't sell fast. Um, I had it for a while, but it did sell on sale for $4.24, plus shipping for a total of $15.94. So that's, the shipping sounds a little high. I wonder where it's going. Um, I bought these color pencils. These are from Old Navy, actually. They're probably part of a back-to-school situation. Um, but I bought these, and I think I probably have a couple of bucks in all of them. Um, and I finally sold these. I've had these for a while. For $12.99 plus shipping for a total of $20.19. Uh, and finally, this big thing. And it'll be hard for me to get this in, a sh in the shot, but this is a tailgate cover protector that you can use like when you're hauling your motorcycle in the truck bed, like a motocross bike or something like that in the truck bed. It's padded. Um, it's got the handle there for the, the tailgate um, handle. And this, um, these sell new on the manufacturer's website for $129, I think, shipped. Um, and I bought this at an auction for, I think, $10, maybe, 10 bucks for this. I might have paid a little less for it, because um, they had a whole bunch. But I had it listed at $99 plus shipping for a long time. It just wasn't moving, so I dropped the price, and then it actually... Uh, was part of the sale, and it and no, I just dropped the price. Um, it ended up selling for sixty seven ninety nine plus shipping for a total of seventy nine forty one. Part of the problem was I had planned to ship it folded in half. Well, this thing is like fifty four inches long. I mean, it's really long, so it was going to cost a lot for shipping. And I decided to update my listing with a smaller package. And I just put in the the listing, this is going to be shipped folded. I wanted them to know that. I don't think it'll damage it. It just might, um, it might be a little misshapen when they take it out of the packaging. But I did disclose that in the listing and it sold immediately after I changed the price and, and changed the shipping to reflect um, a smaller package. So I did pretty well over the weekend. I would love to do better, but... Um, since Saturday afternoon, I sold about $229.96, $230 um, worth of items, 
and um, that's 11 items total. So my average selling price is probably somewhere around um, $20, $19. And then the total pro cost or the total um, amount plus shipping was $298.61. So just under $300 including the shipping. But I'm going to get these things packaged up. And then I want to talk to you about some niche items that I discovered. Because I want you to start really thinking about you know when thinking outside the box and I really hate that phrase because everybody uses it when you're sourcing and bringing some of your other talents into the thrifting world because I really think that's important I think that gives you an edge over someone like me that might just be selling household goods or toys or things like that um, if you um, will start bringing some of your other expertise and um, you know other abilities into the um, into the reselling world. You you know you really can carve out a niche for yourself and uh, make some money in the process. So I'm gonna get this packaged up and I'll be back with you soon. Hey guys, so before we wrap up for today, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about um, finding your niche, finding those niche items for you. Um, I'm kind of a I'll buy anything kind of person um you know my niche is everything but you can become a lot more specialized than that by using talents that you already have and um or or information that you already you already have a, an area where you're already a semi expert um so i just wanted to point out a couple and, and the first one is this the first one is prescriptions, prescription eyeglasses, and I see these at a lot of thrift stores that I go through. Go to, they're usually just kind of tossed in a bin, and um, or you know a little basket or something on the counter, and there can be some money in there if you just take a look. So these are sold. I'm going to show you everything that I'm going to show you is a sold item, but um, these are. Uh, Christian Dior butterfly glasses that had 13 bids. I mean, people were really interested in buying these and they sold for $51. This was sold by Goodwill Industries of San Francisco. Um, so these were just donated to Goodwill and they pulled them and put them on eBay and sold them and $51 for these prescription sunglasses. Here's a, a pair of men's Oakley Servo um, black glasses. And they do have prescription lenses, and the person that will buy the these will have their lens, lenses changed. But if you wear glasses, if you're someone that is kind of, you know, you have a pair of glasses for every day of the week, um, you know how expensive eyeglasses are. So be on the lookout for those um, high-end names, those, uh, you know, very fashionable names or, or just well-known names. Um they're usually written on the inside of the arm, the the earpiece, and um, that'll usually tell you what what brand they are. Sometimes they're on the outside, like this has the Oakley O on the outside, but these sold for fifty dollars, one bit. You know, a person found them to be worth that amount of money. Here's another pair of Oakley so uh, Oakley Servo glasses. These are tortoise shell, and um, Look at that, $85 for this pair. And, uh, you know, eyeglass frames are expensive. Here's a pair of Chanel. And right there you can see the Chanel name. And uh, this happened to come with the dust bag and the um, case. And um, $80 for those. So, you know, eyeglasses is just, is just an area where you can make some money. Um, you know, you, you'll want to... Um, disclose the condition of course with anything that you sell on eBay but there's money to be made here this is a, a market that I uh, know that there are some sellers that always look for these but you never know what you're gonna find so you know be on the lookout for these especially if you are someone that is into eyeglasses um, if you have a particular interest in them you may know that uh, you know like the ones with the springy hinges would you know are more desirable in some cases um you know if you work in an optometrist office you know and you 
have a lot of information, this might be a good niche for you to get into. So that's, that's the first one. The second one is these ball jars. Ball jars have been around forever. Not forever, but a, quite a long time, over 100 years and probably maybe 125 years, I'm thinking maybe. But um, so they're mason jars, they're canning jars. And I know quite a few people that are canning nuts. They can everything. And so they're always, excuse me, on the lookout for canning jars because canning jars, they're not really expensive. But when you start canning a lot, you need to have a, a supply of these. This is a vintage ball jar. Um, it says Lucky 13. On the bottom of the jar, they usually have a number. That's not a very good picture of that, but there it is. Um, this one sold for $27. Here's another number 13 that sold for $19.49. It had three, uh, three bids. This is a pair of of 39s that sold for $35, but 39s are are certainly not the only ball jars that are valuable. Look at this little guy. It's a number 274. It's a half pint mason jar. Um, does have the lid, which is nice, but not mandatory. But you know, if you're interested in this kind of thing, you know, find the thing that you are knowledgeable about or that you have a passion for and make that an, a niche for you because you'll be ahead of the game having a lot of information already about it. Um, the next and, and last um, area that I want to talk about, these are kind of creepy, so I apologize, um, but these are for the crafter. This is a, a baby doll. You know, you see these all the time on the shelf at Goodwill for a dollar or two dollars. This is a baby doll that somebody has revamped and turned into like a creepy prop doll. So uh, for a haunted house or for people that like, there are people that like creepy decor and would find this very desirable. Um, so uh, this was $55. Not the best keywords in the world. I, I, not a very attractive title. But they certainly managed to pull in the bucks with with this creepy, really creepy doll. Look at that. Just frightening. Glows in the dark, too, or under the black, black light. Here's another one. So it's a mixed media, and, um, you know, it's a crackle paint finish. And, you know, this is something that a crafter or an artist has created, and it is truly got a high creep factor but look at that $36 and they probably they probably have a, a you know a couple of hours worth of time in this and um, I would guess very little in actual money in this project so very very creepy look at that wow and then the last one um, is very sad looking and very creepy looking and again um, $32 um, but look at that face, just crackle glaze and paint and all kinds of different treatments. So if you are a crafter or an artist, um, or you have some of those skills or you want to develop those skills, this might be an inexpensive way for you to work on those skills and, um, also make some money. So uh, there are thousands of these little niches out there. These are just a couple that I have been thinking about the past couple of days. I know that I just saw a video um, from Picking Profits. Um, Picking Profits is up in New England, and he sells mostly men's clothes, high-end men's clothes. And uh, he does very, very well. But he was um, talking about buttons from suits, and these were high, very high-end suits. But uh, people were paying upwards of $100 for a set of buttons for a jacket that on one of those high-end suits. So, I mean, there's tons of niches out there. You just need to find one that speaks to you, one that you can find product for or create product for, and uh, one that you have an interest and a passion for. And when you do that, you'll find that, you know, you, you really enjoy doing what you do and it, and it can be profitable. So just wanted to bring those couple of things to you. Um, I am 
going to get this uploaded tonight and in, hopefully um, we'll make another listing or another um, video for you tomorrow. Always remember that the dream works when you do. So keep dreaming and keep working and I'll see you the next time.